Welcome to today's video where we are here in the shop and as you can see behind me, my S15 drift car. Well, today we're gonna to be turning it into a time attack car. You might be wondering, Sam, how are you gonna do that? Because I've read or heard from someone that you cannot have both out of the same car. You can either have a car set up for drift or a car set up for grip. The answer to that is you're wrong, not true but also kind of a little bit right. Um, we're gonna get into a little bit of detail, but um, Okachan, he is more known for his grip and time attack stuff. Um, he's actually got a lot more trophies in that over drifting. In fact, um, probably he still prefers time attack and grip over drifting, to be honest. Um, so if you know him from his drifting days and D1GP and things like that, he's actually way more well known in like GT300, GT500 and a bunch of grip time, time attack stuff. So that aside, I wanna focus on mechanical grip. I don't wanna talk about aero and downforce and things like that, because that's an entirely different subject and that's where things are definitely very different when you're at that level in time attack, right? I'm talking about mechanical grip. A lot of drift cars generally have a lot more mechanical grip than time attack cars. So, the way that my car is currently set up is perfect for both drift and time attack. The only thing we need to change, tire compound, brake compound, and that's about it. So pretty much how Okachan sets up his S15s is that he can do one or the other at just changing brake pads and changing tires. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to be putting on these prototype Valino uh, time attack, like high grip tires, the VR00Bs. I think like th these are prototypes. So actually where it says tread wear, it's blank here. There's no like thing there that tells me how much tread wear it is. But I remember reading up about these and I think it's around like 120 or like something stupid really low. They're really soft. It's going to be a lot of fun once these warm up. Anyways, that aside, these are the tires we're going to be running, 18s all round. So we've got to put some 18s on the front and the back of the S15. Um, and we've also got to change to a different brake pad, more suited for this, that's going to help prevent um, brake fade. We've also got to change the brake fluid. I do not know what brake fluid is in this car. I have not changed it myself ever or checked it or whatever. So there's a good chance it's just like some cheap stuff. We're gonna drain it out and uh, we're gonna put this in. While I'm there, I'm also gonna put the GK Tech braided lines on because uh, I've been putting that off for a while until I needed to do something brake related. So perfect opportunity draining all the fluid to do that. That aside, that's pretty much the, uh, the project for today. And we also got to put the whole hot side back on in the exhaust manifold. So we're going to do that. Also, my buddy Jeff's here working on his S15. He's going to be doing a full front mount today, which is going to be cool. He's got a crazy unmolested uh, S15. It's probably the stockest S15 I think I've ever seen in my shop. <laughs> <laughs> About to get molested it's about to get molested now. He's putting a front mount on it, so it's gonna be a big difference. And uh, I think he's gonna be able to see a little bit more boost and a lot less uh, boost leaks because the biggest issue with this is all of his plastic intercooler piping is pretty much leaking boost. That's pretty much the size of it. Yep, so this thing's gonna be ripping and uh, should be chirping in no time. But uh, that's that, let's get to it. Today's video is sponsored by Lucky Labo. And if you've been sleeping under a rock and don't know who they are, let me educate you because they are this awesome online store heavily dedicated to specifically more so the Sylvia and Skyline chassis in the JDM space. But particularly they sell a bunch of other really cool accessories and this is one of them. If you're an Initial D fan and you love Japanese car culture and all those little knickknacks, you should know what this is. And this isn't just a cheap AC vent cup holder. This one has metal clips. It's super strong. So strong, in fact, here's a quick clip of me drifting with, yes, that is coffee inside that can. So as you just saw, the cup holder was flawless, not a single problem. Um, it is adjustable for both small cans and larger pet bottles and stuff like that. So definitely head to Lucky Labo, go check out some of the other really cool accessories they have there. And don't forget to use your coupon code SAMIT to get further discount. And also guys, support the companies that support me. Once again, I would not be able to be doing the things that I'm doing today if it wasn't for awesome companies like Lucky Labo. So head to luckylabo.com, go check them out, grab something for your car, and let's get back to the video. All right, I promise this time, guys, this is the final time this manifold goes on. I know I said I promised last time. I know, I know, please don't hate me. I know some of you guys are planning to fly over here when COVID's over and slap me for it, but I do what Sensei tells me to do, and I'm sure you would too. <laughs> he tells you, you gotta pull it off and weld it so because he signed you up for a time attack event, you do it. No questions asked. Time for the turbo now. 
do, 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 do. This little trick down here where I keep the drain on it. So I slide that on there. And that gives me enough space to flop, flop this all on and line it all up. Turbo in place. So turbo is now bolted on, not going anywhere. I'm gonna get all the accessories all connected, downpipe, pretty much all of this sorted so we can get onto the stuff to actually make this thing time attack ready. I have all the water lines and oil lines connected up to the turbo and a really bad thought popped into my head. What would this sound like if I started this up for a few seconds right now? I think it's gonna be very, very loud, obnoxious and stupid, but let's find out, Jeff. My buddy, can you hold the camera for me? Absolutely. Say less, right? Like Say anything. less. <laughs> Try and get it from the side in case she shoots flames. <laughs> this is so sick. <laughs> <laughs> loud. Yeah, that wasn't the sound I was hoping for. I don't know what I heard from that. Anyways. It's actually the next day now, the whole hot side is all back on and I'm pretty much just working on getting the brakes all sorted out. I've got some awesome GK Tech extended uh, brake lines for the front as well as some other just normal uh, braided lines to put on the rear. Since we're draining the fluid, it's a good opportunity for me to be able to switch those out. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, and right now I've actually already got uh, this side popped out and draining. We're gonna let that set for probably about 15 minutes. It'll take for all the brake fluid to kind of drain out of the system. And uh, that way we'll be able to just pretty much top her up with the brand new stuff and bleed the whole system out and we should be good. So one really important thing when changing to braided brake lines, especially in the front of these Sylvia's and Skylines, is make sure you take note of how the fittings are. So you can see here, like this is a flat to flat surface. This is going to like kind of like a banjo bolt style here, right? Now on the inside, you're gonna be wondering why is there a wood screw in here? It's because this is how you remove it. You screw this puppy in, you pull this out. All right, this little olive kind of valve thing that goes in there. Because if we left that in there, that would not seal properly and it would probably crush it and hinder our brake performance. So super important you do that. GK Tech do include a little bit of instructions in them to let you guys know about it. So check that out. Make sure you just, just use a wood screw. I just screwed it in by hand. Um, with this guy and then I was able to just kind of wriggle it around and pop it pull it straight out So don't forget about that guys super important So update is I've gotten the brake lines done in the front and uh, I have to say Thoroughly impressed with GK Tech's product here. Um, it's a super simple mod that I think a lot of people just forget about or don't even care to do. But especially when you're doing drifting and you've got an angle kit, you're putting a lot of stress on your factory lines. In fact, your wheel's probably gonna contact them, which is why this one has all the alloy kind of like this thin aluminium sheet wrapped around it with a bunch of zip ties. I know a lot of people when I do like crazy GoPro angles will be like, dude, your lines like rubbed through, but it was just the reflection coming off this alloy sheeting. And this is what the previous owner did, which is a good way to combat the issue, but it's still not gonna solve the problem. And these swell up and get old. And I mean, this is a like nearly a 20 year old car now. And this is like 20 year old rubber and it just expands and gives you really like soft pedal feeling. But obviously we've gone to a proper braided brake line from GK Tech, these are extended too. And I love just how much thought went into this. So the, the piece that holds here is this nice billet machined piece that freely lets the cable slide in and out like this. That's important when I'm flicking the angle like crazy really fast, this can kind of give and take whatever it needs and freely move in and out of way of the tire from hitting it. So I think that's a really cool design. It's gonna increase pedal feel dramatically um, and I'm just pumped because it's clean, tidy and looks beautiful. Don't forget that trick though, removing that inner valve. It looks like a little nitrous jet to be honest. Um, but yeah, we're done. And these now can go in the trash. Another thing I wanted to show you is I've been test fitting wheels and tires. My biggest concern is we're running 18s in the front not just like normal 18 tires as well. We're running 265s, so big meaty boys. And um, I grabbed one of the Koenig 18 uh, by 9.5J, threw it on with a tire to kind of check some clearances. So 
I think once we get this on the ground, things are going to be very different. We're going to probably need to raise the car a little bit in the front to make uh, room for it with my fender, because I think when we go to turn, we're going to be scrubbing on this. The other thing I'm worried about is up the back here. You can see it's very slightly just missing. It's like a hair difference there. So um, I think what we're going to have to do to combat that is muck around with spaces. I have 50 mil of spaces in here right now. If I um, go down a little bit, that's going to decrease our overall, like, footprint turning radius there of the wheel and the tire so we should get a bit more space back there worst case scenario we can uh, adjust the caster for that because i do have a lot of caster in this for drifting um, but otherwise dude it looks so meaty it looks good i love a good meaty look but like like look at this it looks so good <laughs> it literally starting to look like a grip car with these on the front man valino vr00bs looks so beefy Love it. Also, the Koenig hypograms look amazing too. So just finished bleeding all of the brakes and uh, this here is what came out. This is disgusting. Um, yeah, so I don't know how long it has been since this has been bled, what fluid was in there or what, but now we've got a full one of Endless RF650. It's gonna, pedal's gonna feel amazing, especially those braided brake lines now too. I'm excited. Um, I couldn't do the braided brake lines in the rear yet um, because the lines that I have are actually for a Skyline caliper because we're going to dual Skyline calipers in the rear um, and a drum setup for uh, like, just like road registration purposes. That'll be the handbrake in the car. We're gonna have a full hydro and twin um, Skyline calipers in the rear. So that's why um, the braided lines I have are for those calipers, not for the Sylvia ones, which are a bit different. So there's that, but I still can't get over how rank this stuff is that came out of it. It is disgusting. So much sediment and stuff in there. It's disgusting. So I definitely think my brakes are going to feel 10 times better now. On all four corners now on this S15, I've gone and changed over to the time attack pads that Okachan gave me for the brakes as well. So we've bled, we've filled and flushed the system with the new brake uh, fluid. So I'm excited actually to feel what the brakes are going to feel like, especially now that we also have those new um, braided lines on the front. It's going to definitely make it a lot more of a firmer pedal feel, less kind of like squishy grossness. Uh, so the next thing on my to-do list is to pretty much mount up tires and get that sorted out. So in the rear, we've got the 10.5J new wheels from Koenig, these 18s. We're going to throw these on the tire machine and start putting these Valino VR00Bs on. Pretty straightforward. Sit this puppy in there. Good to go. Um, first things first is we actually need a valve or a little stem. I have a whole bag of like a hundred of them up here. Best thing you could ever do is actually buy yourself a whole bunch of those. I have the valve installer here too. If you guys don't know about this, these are super handy. They're so cheap to get as well. So we'll screw the cap off the valve stem. This goes through here like this. Now let me put the camera down and I'll show you what we do. All right, so you, you push the valve stem through the wheel. This guy screws onto the valve stem thread where like the cap would be. You just need to thread her in there a bit. You line up this plastic thing here with the edge of your rim so you don't damage it. And then once that's there, you then just kind of pop her in like that and unscrew her. Now I have a valve stem in my brand new wheel, just like that. Now I'm not gonna put a valve in here yet until we've obviously got a tire on there because when we wanna air this up, we want as much air to get in there as quick as possible to pop the bead. But that's that, we're ready to roll. I'm gonna put some thicky boys on, I'm good to go. Now, I could have gone and gotten some fancy valve stem seals, but I find the rubber ones are really the best. I've had a lot of issues with um, a lot of the metal ones and the nuts getting loose on the back and coming off like mid, mid track days. That's not fun. So I prefer to use the rubber ones. Now, let's see how this looks. Ooh. That looks good. I'm really excited. Whoa. 
look at that. Damn, we've got a bit of poke going on here. That'll squat in though once she's on the ground. Right now it's kind of like all the suspension's in the air so it's hanging down. That should fit really nice. Worst case scenario, we can go to 9.5s if we need it. That is gonna look so good. Dude, my S15's never had beefy tires like this on here. I just got the S15 on the ground, bled the coolant, and uh, this thing looks amazing. I can't get over how just like 18s all round, same wheels, and then just beefy 265s front and rear looks. The car literally looks like it's meant for grip now. Doesn't even look like a drift car. I mean, if you ignore all the duct tape and zip ties in this corner, it literally looks like a time attack like machine. I love it. It's so cool. Oh man, I'm so hyped about this. Look at this. It's completely transformed the entire car. What do you guys think in the comments? Let me know, but I'm really hyped. I'm gonna clean up some of the tools a bit, move the car so we can get a cool photo and stuff like that, but man, it is, it is late right now. Um, I've been helping Jeff today a whole bunch too with the front mount intercooler install on his S15, and uh, he's going out for a test drive right now. It is 1 a.m. in the morning, by the way, and I gotta go home and edit this, so <laughs> definitely burning the midnight oil tonight, but Man, I did so much. We got the new pads in, the new uh, brake fluid in, the brake lines, new tires and wheels mounted up. I still gotta put the, see, <laughs> the Koenig center caps on that one. I gotta go put them on the rest of the other three, but for now it's fine. And the clearance here is perfect. Like we are like level with the fender. We got plenty of room there for a bit of squat on the day. I'm really excited. Also, yeah, going to the smaller spaces, cleared the wheels, uh, the tires enough for us to be able to turn and stuff and not hit the back of the side skirt or the fender there. So definitely way better. I went to a 30 millimeter spacer instead of a 50 and that solved this. Ooh, I hear an S15 approaching. How is it? Faster than you now. You're faster than me now? Yeah. But does it seriously feel better? It does. <laughs> How much? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, because I, again, like, I don't know what a really proper S15 is supposed to feel like. Um, it's definitely better. It's definitely less lag. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's like massively more. Or yeah. Well, you're more. still at stock boost levels. Yeah. yeah. But this is what it should have felt like without all the boost leaks, really. And really, you're not going to really notice much of a difference like with air density, like it being cooler with the front mount until you're like on the highway. Because I mean, like the stock front bumpers in these cover so much with the number plate and stuff. But still, like, like we got your boost gauge working now. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at it, but it doesn't light up. So... Oh, the light behind in yeah, here is broken. Yeah, I need to replace that, so... Um, okay. But yeah, but hey, it works. Dude, that's <laughs> a plus. Awesome, well, at least you can monitor your boost levels now and... Next thing is wheels and coilovers and then uh, a tune. Secrets. The secrets? <laughs> secrets? Okay. Nah, it's all good. <laughs> I'm glad, dude. I'm glad it's sorted for you now. Dude, thank you, man. No worries. Have a good trip home. Get some sleep. <laughs> See you, Jeff. Man, you do the same, bro. See you, dude. All right, now let's listen to a real S15. <laughs> no offense, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> he would not mind me saying that at all. Shame we're not taking this out for a drive today. Okay, I promise, last clip of me looking at the car and telling you how good it looks with meaty tires. Um, but it looks amazing. <laughs> Honest thoughts in the comments and your opinions, guys. I love it. And... Uh, I'm really hyped to see how this thing feels and whether or not we're gonna get the bug, catch the bug on Thursday. If I enjoy this a lot, the car's gonna look like this a lot more, I think. Especially now that we have the shop, it just makes sense that like, it's so much easier for me to just like, spend a day changing, you know, brake pads, wheels over. I, I've, we've got so many spare wheels now. I can just have like, my time attack tires on them, ready to go, we just switch them over. This is gonna be amazing. Whew. And then to think that then after this event, the engine and everything comes out, we're doing a full forged build. The car's probably gonna be making upwards of like, uh, probably right around 500 horsepower and probably new livery and paint and stuff like that too. We're gonna to be transforming this thing. All right, enough talking. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I am absolutely exhausted. It is 1.30 in the morning. I gotta head home and we gotta edit this video. But I hope you guys are excited. We're finally getting into some time attack. And I mean, things just couldn't be any better in my opinion, especially with what that means for this thing. In a couple of weeks is gonna be an absolute monster. <laughs> All right, I'm kind of exhausted. Smash the like button, write us a comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think's gonna happen on Thursday. Um, I'm just aiming for a decent time and no casualties. That's my goal. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Jump up.